Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're doing a painting based on Untitled Goose Game. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. There's a few different ways I could go with this piece. I could make it more like the game so it's like a screenshot, or I could make it more realistic so there's like an actual goose with actual grass and an actual person for the farmer. Or I could kind of adopt a different art technique or art style. And so I looked at um, the beginning area of the game and some famous art pieces that have a unique style, and I thought about my favorites and what would be really neat for this. And based on kind of the lake at the beginning of the game and looking at different art pieces, I thought George Seurat's Sunday on Le Grand Jeu would be perfect. It's one of my favorites. Um, I've seen it in person and it's absolutely massive. It's like seven feet by 10 feet in person. So it's huge. And I thought it would be really cool to kind of do a parody of that, copying the style for one, but also like some elements. So it has kind of the same composition. So I took the shoreline from the painting and some of the background elements just to kind of bring that reference in. But then I took things from the game and put them in as well. So I have the goose, of course, I have the farmer. There's a picnic blanket, a basket, the bench, and then kind of some of the things on the shore, like the rocks. There's no rocks in the original painting, but there's rocks in the game. So I brought those in along with the cattails and the rake and the path, just to bring those elements in. So I kind of combine both of these equally. And now the first thing I want to do with bringing this to the canvas is sketching in all of these things. So I still have the shoreline that matches the painting. I still have some of these background elements that match the painting and then figuring out where things are going. After I have that, I can start to add in an underpainting. I wanted this drawing to match my sketch as closely as possible. And as a preliminary sketch, I need to figure out the ratio of my canvas and then do my sketch in the same ratio as the canvas. So I use a ratio calculator for that. Um, I know the size of my canvas is 18 by 24. I put that in one side of the equation and then I have at least one measurement for my sketch and it'll tell me what the other measurement needs to be. If I don't have it the same ratio, there's either gonna be stuff I have to crop out or kind of stretch and change proportions. I don't want that. I want to know exactly where things are going to be and that my sketch is exactly what I'm planning to do on my canvas. So the ratio of the sketch is the same one as the canvas. That way I can go and do something called a grid system. I can break up my sketch into equal boxes and I did that by cutting it in half, cutting it in half again, and I did this vertically and horizontally to give myself 16 equal boxes across the entire sketch. I did the same thing on the canvas, I just didn't draw in the solid lines. I just kind of did like the little intersection marks so I knew where they would go. That way I could take whatever is in this square here and put it exactly on this box here. For example, the top left box, that hill, that far away one that starts really flat. I can look at it here on my sketch and see that it starts right in the middle of this box. So I could come up here to this box and look what's right in the middle of that box is right where that hill starts. And I know that it comes over here and runs into this hill right on the line. So it gave me a good idea of where to start and where to stop things. Now for my color scheme, I can do this in two ways. I can go towards Syrah's piece with the warmer colors, or I can go towards Goose Game with the cooler colors. But I think I wanna go towards a warmer color painting because it would bring that element to the parody of this. So I'm going to start with an underpainting to kind of skew it that way. And an underpainting is traditionally done in one color. You would look at your piece and you would paint the entire thing in monochrome based on how you want it to look. 
If it's a warm piece, you would want to use a warm undertone. If it's a cooler piece, you would want a cooler color for your underpainting. So I'm going to be doing a two color underpainting, which is not quite the traditional version, but I'm going to be using raw sienna for all of my highlights. This is my warm color. This is going to skew all of the grass towards the warm side of green. Now for all of the shades, I want them to be darker and cooler. So I'm gonna be using ultramarine blue for all of the shadows everywhere that's going to be dark and anywhere that's going to be blue in the final version. I'm doing this in multiple different coats of glaze. And glaze is when you take a clear acrylic binder, like a glazing liquid, and mix your pigments into it. So this is mostly glaze with a little bit of raw sienna. And because it's going to be the lightest raw sienna I have, I'm going to put this everywhere where it's going to be super light, like the goose itself and maybe some of these areas that are in sunshine for the grass. And then I'm going to keep working darker and darker, adding more and more raw sienna into the places where it starts to get a bit darker. But in the areas with the deep shadows, like underneath the bench, I'm going to be using ultramarine blue. So at that time I'll switch to the ultramarine blue and use that in those shadow areas. Like I said, this is a two color underpainting, so I'm using ultramarine blue for everything in shadow that's going to be a cooler tone. So I have some ultramarine blue mixed up with more glazing liquid, and I'm just gonna slowly apply it to some of the areas where it needs to be a bit cooler. Now some of the things I'm thinking about before I start adding my pointillism is I'm thinking about how Seurat did this. Now when you look at his piece close up, it changes, it's not always a point. It's sometimes a point or like a dot and sometimes it's a little dash. On the water, they're all like horizontal dashes going across that, kind of like some waves with little ripples to give that impression. Um, things like the grasses that sit all go vertically for these little dashed lines. Um, things that kind of sit on the bank for the most part are dots, but when they start to follow a contour like the legs or like on the skirts of some of the girls on the dresses, they start to turn into dashes and kind of follow that line to kind of make it have movement as it's going along the body. But I'm just going to start moving into different colors and starting to make some marks on the canvas. I can always add new colors if something's not dark enough or light enough, or if I need to start adding some purples into the blue to make them darker, or if I need to warm it up with some oranges. I can always do that as I'm working, but I need to start making dots on canvas because this is a large canvas and it's going to take a lot of dots to cover it. I've been putting all these dots in the sky and it's kind of a back and forth. I want all the canvas to be covered and I don't want dots to be too big. I want to make sure that the top part is a bit darker than the bottom part towards the hills. So it's just back and forth. Sometimes it's too light, so I'll mix up a darker blue and then do all the darker blue. Sometimes it's too dark, like right now I think it's too dark, and I'm going to be adding some white. So I'm just going to kind of go and then wherever I see blank canvas, I'm putting a small dot. And I'm just going to keep working like that, filling in all of this with white, and then I'll assess again. Is it too light? Now I need to add a darker blue, especially along the top. So it's just going back and forth until I'm happy with how the sky looks.
The painting is just about a fourth of the way done, and I know that because of when I did my grid lines for bringing the drawing over. I had split this into the 16 equal pieces, and I had kind of split the painting in half, and then half again to get my grid lines, and that was right about where this water line is. So it's a good indication that a fourth of the thing is done. Now, there's a few things I've learned doing this. Um, first, I would rather do this in acrylic over oil. If I were doing oil, things would still be wet, and I would be putting my new color dots down, and because the layer already on the canvas is still wet, the new layer coming in would start to muddy those colors. I wouldn't have these nice pure bright dots that acrylic has. Um, the second thing I've learned is if I kind of let my eyes glaze over and just stare at it as I'm doing my dots, I can see the holes and where dots need to go. So I can start to see like, oh, there's an empty space here, an empty space here, an empty space here. I don't have to like sit there and hunt for it. If I glaze my eyes over and just stare at it, I can kind of see and my eyes focus on those spaces. So it's a lot easier just to tap in the colors when I'm not like thinking about it. If I just kind of do it without thinking and let my eyes glaze over, it's a lot easier to put the dots in. And the third thing I've kind of learned about this is Seurat definitely used an undercoat. I can tell when I was studying around the sailboat thinking about how I was gonna do the water, you can see there's a lot of light blue here that's not made up of dots. The dots definitely sit on top of it right around the sailboat. And I think that's something that would help me out, especially in some of these big open areas that I have an undercoat of the color I need to put down because it's so frustrating when there's so much white space and you're filling it in and you're just doing dots and dots and dots until you have the entire canvas covered. So I think that's something I'm going to do, especially with the water and the grass, because those areas are so big to fill in so many dots. It's going to help me immensely if I put down a color that the actual painting needs to be there. So I'm going to use some light blue and fill in all of the white of this part of the canvas to give myself a nice underpainting there. And then for the grass, I'm gonna fill it in with a green wash just to get it somewhat green so it helps me out when I'm doing the actual layers. The water was one of the areas I was concerned about filling in, just because there's so much. And I have to say, the dots are a lot easier to do than these dashes. But now that it's done, I'm really happy with it. There's some pinks and some purples in the shadows in here. Um, there's some sienna throughout. And it just kind of comes together really nicely. And you look at it up close and you see all these tiny little marks. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I also did the sailboat um, with some raw sienna and titanium white, just kind of doing these dashes that kind of follow the length of the sail. There's a tiny little mast I've put in using some yellow, some burnt umber, some burnt sienna. Um, and one thing I've noticed about Siraz, he kind of does this halo. He does it a lot in the grass, like around figureheads, um, where they are in the grass, where he'll kind of do different colors around that, but not in the other areas. And he does that with the sailboat. Um, you can see on the wall behind his sailboat, it's a little bit darker around it, just to kind of make it pop from that background and it doesn't blend in because they're very similar colors. So I've done that too, just to make sure that the sailboat kind of pops out from that background and it worked really well. Um, it's not really noticeable unless you focus on it and you're trying to think of how the color should look there. Um, but now that all the water's done, the sailboat's done, I'm gonna continue to work on all of these little things that sit in the water. That way all of the water stuff will be done and it's just all of the land stuff left. And I'm gonna work on these rocks first and I'm glad to be going back to tiny dots instead of dashes. Now, Sarad didn't really use gray in his paintings. Um, he did use black, um, he used a lot of the historical colors, but to make a good gray without using black, I'm gonna be using ultramarine blue and raw sienna, the colors I had used for my original underpainting. Now, when you mix them together with a little bit of titanium white, you get a pretty good gray color. So I'm gonna be using 
using that for my rocks, adding in more ultramarine blue for the shadow and more titanium white for the highlights. So I've just been painting dots and there's not a whole lot to say, which is kind of the hard thing about the full version of this painting. The brush strokes are just dots, except a few times when they're just dashes. So I've just been building dots and dots and dots on top of each other, using cooler, darker colors for the shadows and warmer, brighter colors for the highlights. Um, I added in the little blanket here where the sandwich and the apple sit, and I added in those two. I added in the picnic basket, um, so now I'm going to work on the picnic blanket. And it's going to be a plaid pattern like the game is, and the cool thing about it is plaid, when it overlaps, makes a new color. And I can do that really easy with pointillism. I can do the blue stripe, the red stripe, and then when they start to overlap with each other going the opposite direction, they're going to form a new color without adding anything else here on the canvas.
And we're done! We have a George Seurat Pointillism Untitled Goose Game painting. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.